Hello everybody and welcome to Maya Sanctuary. I'm Maya. Today's topic is pathological demand avoidance. This is a research video. For the research in this video, I used an article to gather information for this topic. The link to the, this article will be posted in the comment section below. If you're interested to know more after you watch, I'll link my social media accounts in the video description box. If you like or enjoy my content, I would appreciate if you would subscribe, like, share, or leave a comment and or any suggestion down below. One way you can support my channel is by becoming a patron. The link to my patron will be posted in the comment section below. Thanks a lot. Another way you can support my channel is by supporting me on coffee. The link to my coffee will be posted in the comment section below. Thanks a lot. Now let's get into today's topic. The information below came from the Dr. Cruwin website in the article Pathological Demand Avoidance. Pathological, sorry, pathological demand avoidance, or PDA, while not officially recognized in the DSM-5, is a set of behavioral uh, traits common among certain autistic indivi in individuals. It affects how they uh, react to daily demands and expectations, both self-imposed and those from others. Often, this phenomenon is referred to within the autistic community as persistent drive for auto autonomy. This term is considered more descriptive as it accurately encapsulates the core issue, an extreme need for autonomy. While most of us thrive with a moderate degree of autonomy, for some, this need can be so extreme that it disrupts their ability to function. On the outside, such individuals appear to be resisting cooperation with others, even when it's beneficial for them. Internali internally, they might feel incapable of performing tasks that they themselves desire if these tasks are perceived as demands. In this blog post, we'll divulge, we'll, sorry, we'll divulge into the specifics of PDA and its impact on those affected and how to support individuals um, fitting this profile. PDA, PDA is defined as an intense avoidance of everyday demands and expectations, such as those related to work, school, daily life, or social interaction. It's an extreme anxiety-driven desire to maintain control over one's own life. Since PDA is not recognized in the DSM-5, individuals exhibiting these symptoms may have been previously diagnosed with Oppositional Defiance Disorder, or ODD, a diagnosis that unfortunately does not lead to productive treatment or um, intervention. If you find that your conversations with someone often play out as follows, even if the request seems harmless or beneficial, you might be dealing with PT. PDA. You. Do you want to? Them. No. People with PDA might empl employ behaviors to avoid demands such as avoiding social situations, e excuses for non-compliance, distraction tactics, or even lying if they feel desperate to avoid, sorry, to evade demands. Demands as perceived with, in, with individuals with PDA can encompass a broad range of everyday situations that others may not consider as such. Some examples include simple requests following routines set by others, social expectations, academic and, or work-related tasks, and personal care activities. It's crucial to understand that what appears to be ordinary to be ordinary situations for most can feel overwhelming and anxiety inducing for people with PDA. PDA can specifically influence the daily lives of those ex sorry influence those the daily lives of those affected. They may experience high levels of anxiety and stress, difficulty with cooperation, social challenges, emotional regulation regul sorry regulation difficulties rigidity, inflexibility, 
and even engaging in masking or camouflaging behaviors. The impact of PDA can vary greatly from person to person, each with a unique profile of strengths and challenges. Understanding and supporting the their unique needs and um, and perspective are crucial in providing appropriate support and accommodation. Supporting an, an adult with PDA starts with understanding their behavior is not a choice. Biologically, psychology, psychologically, and sometimes genetic factors contributed to the observed behaviors. When you believe that the problematic behaviors are not intentional, it changes your approach. Building a, build a relationship. Most people with PDA often feel misunderstood. Trust and mutual respect are critical in supporting in providing support. Connect with them by showing genuine interest in their inter, sorry, showing genuine in, interest in their interests, dislikes, passions, and aspirations. Gain permission to help first. Always ask and gain permission before offering help or creating a plan for goal achievement. Learn how to use declarative language. People with PDA often feel that demands are opposed, opposed upon on them. Sorry, being imposed on them. The key to engaging them in co constructive com co conversation is to learn how to use declarative language, which makes them feel competent and understand rather sorry and understood rather than opposed upon. Get them in the driver's seat, encouraging them to take control of their lives and achieve their goals. Imposing your goals on someone with PDA is not a winning strategy. Support, um, sorry, support executive function challenges. If you, if they struggle with executive functioning, help them decide their priorities, create a plan, figure out the next steps, and keep the momentum going. Being patient and flexible. Patience and flexibility are crucial when dealing with someone with PDA. Extend gen gentle, shame-free accountability when they are not feeling overwhelmed with anxiety. If it seems like they can never have a conversation, it may be, it may be time to seek professional help. And final thought, PDA, PDA is not a relatively unknown profile. Sorry, is a relatively, let me say that again. Final thoughts. PDA is a relative unknown profile that describes a subset of autistic people significantly affecting their daily lives. By providing understanding and support, we can help individuals with PDA live fulfilling and meaningful lives. I hope this video helps someone. As some of you may know, I have problems with pronunciation, which is because I'm dyslexic, autistic, and an ADHD. -er. I don't try to hide this because I want people who have similar struggles to know that they aren't alone. No matter how hard pronouncing some words will be, I will always try my best. You, those are the reasons I leave my mistakes in these videos. I am always, as always, I am open to any suggestions you have for any future video topics. Please let me know what they are in the comment section below or on my Twitter page. And my Twitter handle is at Burley Ryan. I'll spell it for you. It's spelled, my last name is spelled B-U-R-L-E-Y and my first name is spelled M-A-R-I-A-H. The next video will be on the topic of Gilbert Syndrome, and that will be available on my Patreon on Wednesday, October 30th at 6 p.m. Eastern, and available on my YouTube channel on Saturday, November 2nd at 6 p.m. Eastern. I hope everyone's continuing to stay safe. I'll post my notes in the comment section for anyone who needs them. Feel free to share this video with anyone you think might benefit from watching it. If you want to be notified when I do any live streams or upload any new content, you're going to want to click the bell icon and select the all options under the bell icon. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Bye.